that you are, it's creating a larger range of more confidence. This right here, that's our standard deviation for the population divided by the square root of n. We've seen stuff like that before. That was earlier in our class. What this does is represents the maximum difference between x bar and mu for a given level of confidence. Again, can you ever be 100% confident? No. Ever? No. no, because it's going to go from negative infinity to infinity and you can't do that. But we can be a certain level of confidence and here's how it works. If E is the maximum difference between these two numbers, then if I take x bar minus E and I take x bar plus E, where x bar is my point estimate for mu, it says, well, check it out. This would give me an upper range for mu. This would give me a lower range for mu. If this is the maximum difference, I can say, well, then mu is supposed to not be any bigger than this or any smaller than this. That's what's giving me this nice bounds on my confidence interval. Does it look similar to what we've done before? It's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Only difference is instead of P be my population proportion, uh, population parameter, that's the proportion, we now have mu. It's still a population type deal, right? It's still the population parameter, it's just now we're talking about means instead, not proportions anymore. We still have, instead of P hat, we have X bar. That's still the other thing on top, right? Saying, I'm, I'm from a sample. X bar is our sample mean, this is the maximum difference above and below, giving us a nice interval to which we're a certain level of confidence that our actual population pr uh, parameters are fall in. Also, one last thing, uh, remember that you can represent this as x bar plus or minus e. That's another way that you could potentially see that. So let me give you the steps here. They're going to be very similar to the last steps I gave you for these, these proportions in the last last section, but I'll give it to you again. We'll go through an example and then we'll find out how to find the required sample size like we did last time for a certain margin of error. You guys ready for it? Mm -hmm. Has it made sense so far? So first step. Well, the first thing you got to do, you got to have your requirements met, right? So you're going to check these things, what you need. You're going to check to see whether you have a random sample. If it's not stated, you're going to assume it's a random sample. Um, we, we've already covered all that stuff before. We're going to check to see whether you, you have your sigma node. It's got to say up there, assume the population standard deviation is. You've got to have that. And then we're going to see whether our sample size is bigger than 30. If it is, great. If it's not, we have to have this statement. The population is normally distributed. We've got to check those requirements. First thing, check requirements. They've got to be met. Number two, you're going to find your critical value. It's going to have a level of confidence. It's going to say 90% or 95% or 99 most likely. If it says something else like 98 or 96, you got some of those on your homework, right? You had to actually look that up in the table. You had to split that up and say, well, for 98, it would be 0.01. You take your 0 0.02 divided by 2, you look at 0.01, it'll give you a certain z. So somehow we're going to find our critical value. So that's that z alpha over 2 for a certain confidence level. <coughs> Critical value for the given confidence level. Third thing, well, after you have that, after you have your critical value, well, you're going to know your, your sigma because it's going to be listing your problem. You're also going to know your n. What's your n stand for again? Yeah, in this context, it's not number of trials because we're not dealing with a proportion. We, we don't have that anymore. Right now, it's your, it's your sample size. So n stands for either a sample size or the number of trials. So for us, we're going to have this, we're going to have this, we're, you just found that, that means you're able to find your E. So the next step is you're going to find your E.
<clears throat> Once you have your E, you're set. You're set. You're going to have your X bar. It's going to be listed somewhere in your problem. You'll be able to make up your confidence in it. And I'll write out the interpretation in just a moment, but remember what the interpretation is of this thing, this confidence interval. Basically, it says this. And this is, this is a quote. Remember I had you write down that quote a while back? I said, quote, um, I don't know what the exact value of the population mean is. No, we're talking about mean now. I don't know what the exact value of population mean is, but I am blank percent confident, 90, 95, 99, percent confident that will, it will fall in this range. Does that make sense? That's what we've been having for, for the past couple of weeks now. Would you like to see an example? Good. <coughs> you guys ever measured your resting pulse rate? Have you ever measured that? Yeah. You sit there like you, you wake up and you're like, I'm tired. I'm going to measure my pulse. That happens to me every morning. It's the first thing I want to do. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I don't ever do that. Uh, but they ask you to do that to see what your resting heart rate is. It tells you apparently uh, if you're healthier or whatever. Uh, usually if you, you exercise a lot, you'll have a lower resting heart rate uh, than if, if you don't. Normally that's what happens. Uh, so in general though, this is what was done. They took a sample. of 40 students. Here's how this is going to be worded on your test. The average resting heart rate for the sample was 76.3 beats per minute. so far? Okay. Assume the population standard deviation is 12.5 beats per minute. What I want us to do is construct a 99% confidence interval for the population mean of, of resting heart rate. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the average resting heart rate of the population. Hey, test qu homework question, test qu or just like it, very, very similar. That's the wording. And if you don't know how to diagnose this, you're going to get stuck, right? You're going to read that and go, oh my gosh, there's like 50 <coughs> words there. I want to know what to do. I have to read. I hate reading in math class. Come on. I see numbers. I see only, I see four numbers. 
That's all I see. What am I going to do with this problem? Random sample of 40 students. The average resting heart rate for the sample was 76.3 beats per minute. Assume the population standard deviation is 12.5 beats per minute. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the average resting heart rate of the population. Wow. You better be able to tell what each of those things mean. Now we're going to go through our steps. That's why I gave you steps. First thing you got to do, you got to check the requirements. Now you have your requirements on your paper probably, right? Firstly, what the first requirement was what? Is the first requirement met? Do I have a random sample? I even said specifically I had a random sample. Even if I hadn't said random, you're going to assume it's a random sample. Number two, unless it says specifically this sample was not random. Okay, then you, you, you know. <laughs> this was just my buddies. Uh, so, like for instance, a, a non-random sample would be uh, if they went to a college and somehow just selected all the people who ran track. Naturally, they're going to have very low resting heart rates, right? It's that's not random. That doesn't rep do all of you run track? That'd be really weird if y'all did. Uh, no, y'all y'all don't. Okay, so number one requirement is met. Number two, the second requirement was, what was the second requirement? The population standard deviation must be known. Is that anywhere up there? Where does it say it? Well, no, but where, where, where's the sentence? What's the sentence say specifically? Bam. Okay. Assume the population standard deviation is. That has to be there. Has to be there. It should say somewhere population standard deviation is or sigma is. I mean, that's even more blatant, right? Just in your face. Sigma is this. That'd be nice. It doesn't say that here. I'm making it as hard as I can. That way I give you, you know, everything else would be easier than this. It's about as hard as I can make it for you because you have to read through and diagnose everything about it. So this, assume the population standard deviation is 12.5 beats per minute. It gives you the sigma. So is requirement two met? If requirement two wasn't met, could I do the stuff I'm about to do? The answer is no. No, we'd have to find something else. That's the next section. The third requirement is what? Yeah, what's N stand for again? Okay, so sample size must be what? Okay, or what if it's not? The population must be normally distributed. That's what it has to say. Okay, so let's read through here. Is the sample size more than... 30. Yes. Where's the say that? Ah, in a sample of 40. Sample means N. N means sample. Sample of 40 students. Is that more than 30? Yeah, yeah. I know that 40 is more than 30. That's great. $40 is more than $30. So we have the requirement met for that. Now, if this had said 29, if this had said 30, if that had said 29, 30, 15, I would need another statement before I can move on any further. It would have to say somewhere in here, the population is normally distributed. Are you clear on that? So the, the same requirements we've had from before. It's got to be there. Now, if that's the case, what we, we've done, number one. The second thing we've got to do, we got to identify our critical value. That's our, our Z alpha over 2, and it's going to come from the confidence level. In this case, can you tell me what the confidence level is? 99%. 99% confidence level. Very good. Can you tell me the critical value for a 99% confidence level? 2.575. Very good. 2.575. Now, the next part says we're supposed to find E, but there's a couple of the letters we need to signify. So before we get to our E, not only are we going to have a Z alpha over 2, because that's part of it, I also want you to explicitly list out, that means put that on your paper, your sigma and your 